uh, Tena Koto Katoa, um, Koro and Painaho. Uh, I'm the uh, Digital NZ Services Manager at Atihio Aotearoa Digital New Zealand. Uh, we're part of the National Library of New Zealand, Te Puna Mātauranga Aotearoa. As mentioned, um, I was not originally going to be uh, delivering this uh, this talk. My online engagement manager, Kelly Dix, um, put together this wonderful presentation. Um, uh, so I do apologize if it sounds a little bit like I'm reading an auto cue, um, uh, but uh, uh, very happy to be here and to talk about Digital NZ with you today. Um, thanks to everybody in the Auckland Central Library at the moment and everybody on Zoom across the Motu. Um, uh, I'll just uh, read a couple of things that Kelly has written about herself and then I'll sort of make the connection to myself. Um, although uh, um, we both now live in Te Whanganui Atara, um, Kelly knows the Central Library well. She studied at AUT and uh, many of her classes were in the building across the road from the library. Um, I actually worked at, uh, at Auckland Central Library uh, many, many moons ago. Um, uh, uh, I had a number of roles finishing up in the, as a library assistant in the uh, Auckland Research Centre. So it's, it's a place I, I know well and, and uh, uh, I've spent a lot of time in. Um, another place that Kelly and myself spent a lot of time uh, was uh, Cafe DKD. This is a long, long defunct uh, cafe. Uh, this image of it from the Auckland Library's um, uh, online collections. Um, uh, lo long gone cafe. Uh, it was part of the Civic Building, um, overtaken by IMAX and, and the like. Um, However, I'm jumping a little ahead of myself. Uh, my talk today will be quite practical. How to use Digital NZ, how to search and save items that interest you, and how to create stories using both uh, items you find and images that you have uploaded. Uh, I'll leave time at the end for questions, hopefully. Um, the, this website is primarily, primarily a search service which aims to make New Zealand digital content easier to find, share, and use. Uh, when we say digital content, we are talking about a huge range of uh, material from uh, heritage, government, media, community, and academic organizations, um, photographs, audio, video, research papers, uh, newspapers, websites, and much more. So this is what we looked like in 2008. You can still find uh, this on the Wayback Machine if you're interested. Um, uh, that's when we launched and pulled together, started to pull together the uh, online collections of many institutions. Uh, and this is us 14 years later. We uh, pulled together more than 30 million items held by over 200 different organizations, uh, which we refer to as content partners. Uh, the uh, number of items in Digital NZ grows daily as new data is created and added to our partner sites or as new content partners come on board, which happens on a regular basis. And of course, Auckland Libraries is, is, uh, is uh, one of those um, content partners. Uh, to do this, we do something called harvesting. We harvest the content that has been digitized by people and organizations. Uh, you can see them represented on the left of this diagram, uh, ranging from large collections such as Auckland Libraries, currently more than 400,000 items to much smaller collections such as Awarua Communications Museum. Our software called Supplejack works as a kind of a magic hat, uh, taking the metadata, which is the information about um, uh, those item, each item, title, date, description, et cetera, uh, and drawing them together to make them easier to find, share, and use um, through a central kind of point. Uh, you can see this search for, for the keyword coat brings up links to content from the New Zealand Fashion Museum, Te Awamuta Museum, Upper Hutt City Library, and more. I guess an important thing to note is that Digital NZ is not a repository. We don't actually hold the items, even though we do provide a thumbnail um, representation if one exists. Uh, we don't hold the I the original items. Instead, we just point people to the digital collections around the country. So you can click through to 
content partners websites. I mentioned that we frequently bring in new content partners. One of the more recent uh, ones is uh, Timaru District Libraries, whose collection includes newspaper clippings and photos from the area. There's a fascinating series of photos of the library, including this one from about 1950 of librarians Pauline Hamilton and Pauline Hart, and their repairing books there. We recently added uh, Tapuaka from Teheringa Waka Victoria University of Wellington, and this includes photos of staff and students and also publications going back to the student magazine Spike from 1902. If you click through to the university's heritage and archives collection by, by going through into one of those search results, uh, then you can read the publications, including this article about the first inter-university college tournament where students competed in athletics, debating, and tennis. For those who, of us who live in, in Wellington, the Wellington City Council Archives Collection, a uh, fairly recent con large content partner, um, has a fascinating insights into the region with aerial photos we can zoom in really close to view streets and houses. Um, it's not Google Street View uh, quite, but uh, pretty good for 1945. Uh, this is a close up of Kilburnie Evans Bay from the air. Uh, and there's some well-known Wellington landmarks look, looking quite different to as they, they are now. This is the opening of the Mount Victoria Tunnel on 12th of October, 1931. Loving the, uh, loving the chairs there. Um, a newish collection is the Auckland Library's YouTube channel, which includes the series, series of heritage talks uh, that this is part of. Um, this video explores pepper posters printed in Rarotonga in the 1840s that are now in, in the Auckland Library's collection. Uh, this collection is from 2022, but it's a huge one from Archives New Zealand, more than 30,000 photos taken from the National Publicity Studios. Uh, the fact that we pulled together such a diverse, uh, um, such diverse data is what makes us a popular tool for researchers looking to quickly find information from multiple sources. So why use Digital NZ? The website surfaces some collections that are trickier to find on Google and, and includes a trustworthy link back to the source of the content. So it's always easy to find where items have come from. For example, on this record page from a CocoNet TV video about how to make Umu in the City 101, click on the View Original Item button. You can see the red, red button there on the right hand side of the page. And you'll go through to CocoNet TV itself where you can see uh, additional information, such as the names of the people who worked on the video. Um, and in some cases, you'll be able to order uh, in a more sort of full resolution uh, copy of an image, for instance, um, by going through to the content partner. So how do you find what you're looking for when there are more than 30 million items to search through? It's a bit of a needle in a haystack type situation. Um, to search, you uh, simply enter keywords in the search box, as, as you might expect. Uh, there are more than a million records in the search results if I type in railway station. Uh, obviously, this is not very helpful. However, there are a number of ways to narrow down your search results to help you find what you're looking for. All of this information about how to search to DLNZ incidentally is listed on our help page. You can see a link to it on the side navigation. There are other help topics too. Let's take another look at our search for railway station. You'll see a series of tabs underneath uh, the search bar. These give you options to filter by format, uh, such as images or audio and more, which includes some of the um, less used categories such as research papers, newspapers, manuscripts, websites, articles, books, etc. This is what a research paper item page looks like in Digital NZ. You can see the title of the research paper, the format, which is a, a thesis master's level, and a date. You can also see part of the abstract there in the description field. Newspapers are another format available to search on Digital NZ. The majority of these uh, that you'll find have been harvested from papers past, which is another nat 
National Library website. Um, but you do need to keep in mind through us that at this stage, we only have some of the digitized newspapers and journals. Um, for a more comprehensive search, it does pay to go directly to papers past as well. Uh, then there's a second row of filters that give you the ability to narrow, uh, further ability to narrow down your search results. The first option is to filter by content partner. Uh, and then you can filter by collection. Some content partners, uh, such as Auckland Libraries, do have a number of collections, uh, separate collections underneath there, uh, underneath them um, that you can choose from, such as the the uh, the Kura Images collection uh, versus the YouTube channel that we added earlier this year. Uh, then you can filter by usage. Uh, we have five usage statements that we map uh, the any usage or copyright metadata a content partner gives us uh, to, and those are all right reserved, modify, share, unknown, and use commercially. These statements are based on the uh, the metadata given to us, um, and so there can be a bit of mapping involved there. Uh, we do recommend, especially with the use with usage information. And copyright information to uh, double check if you want to use a particular search result for uh, particularly for commercial use it's important just to double check with the content partner um, and do some due diligence um, we do provide this filter but you do need to be a little bit careful uh, about how you're uh, what you're using and how you're using it what the copyright status is um, of course, the perfect image might have an all rights reserved statement. Um, this uh, doesn't mean that you definitely can't use it. You may just have need permission for your particular use. So for instance, in this one, you might might need to get in touch with Motat so they can facilitate a, um, a uh, an interaction with the copyright holder. All rights reserved effectively means that it, the image is likely to be in copyright and that the copyright holder has not licensed it um, for use, for instance, using a CC license. Um, again, you, you do need to be a little bit careful. Um, copyright can be complex, so we do provide a bit of uh, guidance um, about what to look for in copyright usage on our help page um, and what items uh, might be in the public domain. Uh, the final filter on search results is uh, the ability to filter by decade. Uh, you can select one or more decades to narrow down your search results to a particular time period. There are also a number of search ticks, tips and tricks to help you navigate. Um, our search tools support fuzzy search, Boolean search, wildcards, and ranges. For example, adding a tilde, that's the wiggly line on the top left of your keyboard, after a word creates a fuzzy search. A fuzzy search will find a word even if it is misspelled, or in the case of, say, Wanganui, the spelling has changed. Uh, and you can go to the search tips on our help page. Um, you can see the uh, fuzzy search working here. So this is 56,900 images on the keyword Wanganui uh, without the tilde. Uh, and if we add it in, we get uh, many more uh, search results. So it's, it's adding in um, keywords that are similar to um, the one that you've entered. One great thing about uh, Digital NZ is the unexpected items that you might find that could help you add detail to your research. Uh, thinking about the Barbie movie at the moment and all things pink, uh, consider Marjorie Brooks Smith's wedding dress from 1948, or the pink gowns worn in this wedding in 1968 from Pukiariki. Uh, there's a pink Mau Mau fish from Te Ara, the Encyclopedia of New Zealand, or a pink camellia flower from iNaturalist NZ, uh, and this pink coffee pot from Te Toi Uku, the Crown Lynn and Clayworks Museum. And if we actually search for Barbie, we'd find these dolls from the University of Otago. Go figure. 
Uh, and uh, then in turn, we've got this uh, Radio New Zealand uh, morning news story about the Barbie doll turning 50 in 2009. Um, you can find other items such as house plans. This is from uh, Pokiariki from uh, New Plymouth. Uh, um, even items such as this uh, driver's license um, issued to a builder in central Otago. Uh, we have audio and oral histories. Uh, this is an interview with Monty Wikirifi, who fought at the Battle of Casino. Uh, and we've got this video. You can meet the Gisman locals with Selwyn Toogood in this uh, 1964 show from provided to us from NZ On Screen. Uh, we've got photos of pets such as Willie Lincoln, a uh, bit of a ladies' man or dog who roamed the district looking for a mate. Apparently, he met his fate at the end of a barrel of displeased dog owner's gun. Whoops. And there are many, many family photos in Digital NZ, including this unidentified house and family from 1905 in the Tairafiti Museum collection. There are actually huge numbers of unidentified uh, people in the collections, particularly uh, uh, portraits. Uh, as you can see here, more than 23,000 photos have come up when we search for, the, for unknown woman. As a, uh, as a keyword search. If you uh, do come across an item that you can add more information to, you can use the commenting tool um, uh, at the bottom of a record page. Uh, you can see this user has added some more information about um, MZ Waller, who is named in the caption of this photo. Um, and uh, the user has added the comment, Maureen Zelda Waller, uh, later, Bishop worked in telephone exchanges most of her working life. The content partner, Palmerston North City Library, can add this information about that image to their database. And we usually uh, facilitate that. They'll make the change on their system and then we uh, rerun that harvesting process I'm, I mentioned earlier and uh, either add or correct information that uh, content partners have provided us. If you don't have a Facebook account and you do and you want to uh, do that, make a correction or add more information on an item, feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, most of us work in the National Library Building, Wellington, um, which is looking quite impressive in this uh, photo from the Fletcher Trust Collection of 1987. Uh, our email address is info at digitalnz.org. So that is part one of the presentation uh, about searching and filtering. And next, I'd like to talk to you about stories. Um, one of the wonderful things about our service is the stories tool. Uh, you can create or cur curate your own story using items from the more than 200 content partners that we provide access to. There are currently more than 8,000 stories on Digital NZ. There are stories about Pacific patterns, sheepdogs, New Zealand and Samoa in World War I, um, and many, many more. They've been made by a wide variety of Digital NZ users, from students uh, through to academics, heritage organizations, and researchers. Anyone who is interested in, uh, in, in something and wants to gather together a number of items um, uh, from our collections. Next, I will show you how to make a story. Uh, you don't need to sign up to search Digital NZ, but you will need to sign up to a, a free account to create stories. You sign up in the top right corner, uh, add the usual details, name, username, etc. Uh, click the confirmation link in the email that will send out to you that looks like this. Uh, and then to start making a story, uh, search for something you're interested in. Uh, I've searched for women's soccer, but it would be good to search for women's football too, as the sport is known in New Zealand by both names. Uh, here we find that we've got 80 images come up. Um, per, per, perhaps this number will increase after the um, after the uh, the events are going on at the moment. Uh, so look for an item you'd like to add to start your story. 
Uh, I'm going to start with this newspaper image of a photo of two women's football captains. Um, uh, you can add to the story here by clicking the add to story uh, button there that's uh, highlighted by the blue arrow on the search results page. Or you can do the same thing uh, by clicking the add story button on the actual record page if you've clicked through to a search result. Uh, then you'll get this dialogue come up and you can choose an existing story that you've already uh, created or create a new one. And you'll see that that come up in the list. Uh, so this is only when you're logged on, obviously. Uh, you've signed up and logged on. Uh, to see the list of your stories, click on the username when you are logged in at the top right hand corner of your screen. Oh, it looks like the slide is blank, but I think hopefully the next one. Um, uh, no, we might see uh, the, I'll point, point it out uh, when we get to a slide that has that. Um, once I've created the story, it will look like this. You can see the photo I've added in the bottom left of the story. Uh, there are a number of fields at the top, uh, which are all conf configurable by you. You can enter your own title, you, uh, your own description and subjects. Um, uh, as de so as detailed here, um, when you first start a story, the uh, uh, Digital NZ team will moderate the stories, but once we've checked, um, uh, checked it out, you can manage change access of your story. Um, so that if you click manage or change access in that screen, you'll get these sharing settings, um, which means that you can control who can see your story. So uh, there's public, hidden, or private. Public means that it'll, it will turn up in a search of Digital NZ once we've moderated it. So, uh, for example, that search of soccer that we that I did earlier, um, this new soccer story would turn, would show up there. So other users of Digital NZ can see your your story. Uh, hidden means that only people with the direct URL, uh, so you can share a direct URL and only those people can see it. Um, and private means that you uh, is only viewable by you. You need to log in and uh, look at your own story. So that's quite useful if you're still sort of creating something. Um, so I'm going to share another story now, uh, one about the Ferry family of Dunedin. You may recognize the name, descendants of Gabrielle Ferry, who started a drapery store which grew to become department store and later a specialized menswear store um, possibly more relevant to uh, to uh, anybody joining us from Wellington um, or from further south such as Dunedin uh, you can see I've added uh, text to the story uh, in 1892 16 year old Gabriel immigrated to join the Lebanese community in Dunedin uh, to add text on your story uh, you can click the add text button uh, this button sits under each row of items so that you've added to your story. You don't need to add text, um, but it just makes it at a uh, sort of more of a, uh, a narrative document. If you do, uh, we've got a text editor that has a, a range of um, for the formatting options there, such as uh, quotes and bulleted lists and um, uh, etc. Uh, you can add a number of items. When you add a number of items, they can make the story a little bit messy. Um, uh, so, and the newest item, in this case, Joe Ferry in his van, will be at the end of the story. Um, however, you can drag and drop the items with your, your mouse and your cursor. Um, uh, this can be a little bit tricky, but it is, uh, it is uh, doable. Uh, there are other image editing options. If you click the three dots menu in the top right of an image, to you can delete the item from your story. They won't delete it from Digital NZ, obviously. It's just so that it won't appear in your story. Um, you can make the item full width or add your own caption, uh, which will go alongside the content partner's metadata only when you view it in the story. Uh, so you can see uh, it appears in large type uh, above the content partner's description, which you can um, see in this example uh, down the bottom here. 
A great example of how to use the caption field can, is uh, uh, as exemplified in this family history about the Poso family of Whanganui. You can see the items title and content partner underneath the gray line there. So the first one it says Miss uh, Miss, Mima, Miss Mima Jemima Poto, um, the, but the author has added larger the larger text above. Uh, so, which has included their dates, this person's date of birth and death, and some extra extra information about each photo. Uh, for example, uh, in that first one, she's written Mima briefly followed her mother's footsteps as a milliner before embarking on a dressmaking business. Uh, you can also, uh, we've recently in the last two years added uh, the ability to upload your own image to a story. This doesn't become part of the wider collections of digital New Zealand, but it can just help to add a bit of uh, something extra to your story. You know, particularly if you're doing a family history, you might find some material on Digital NZ, um, uh, write about your family genealogy, and uh, then be able to upload your own image of say a family reunion recently, or, you know, or any number of, ways of doing that so on a story page you'll see this upload your image um, then navigate to find the image on your uh, device uh, and up and click upload image to your story uh, then uh, you can add your own title description subjects etc uh, and then you need to choose a copyright status and or uh, license for your image um, uh, assuming you have actually taken the image, then you're likely to be the copyright holder. Um, uh, and so you can, uh, if that's the case, you could choose between all rights reserved, um, or you could choose to license it with that creative commons, uh, license option that we provided there. If you believe the, I, the images in the public domain, for instance, maybe it's a scanned image, uh, of, um, uh, of your great grandparents that's from sort of before 1944 it's probably going to be in the public domain uh, based on copyright law you'll be able to still you'll be able to upload it and list it as no known copyright uh, once you've selected that you need to read and agree to the contributed content terms of use uh, and then now you can see my user upload uh, so this is a photo of Luna the cat and uh, in the story there, um, it is sitting alongside some historical uh, photos from uh, Howick Historical Village and the Alexander Turnbull Library, um, and uh, you can see it identified there in the uh, top left. So this will only be seen uh, if a viewer, uh, if a user sees your story, it, it doesn't go any further than that. Um, uh, right, and so Kelly has, has put some in some notes about that. Um, uh, so they don't appear in, in a search of digital and Z. For example, in this story uh, of the Sinclair family of Wainui Mata, um, a photo of Agnes Sinclair has been uploaded by actually by the Wainui Mata Museum. Uh, you can see their username in the bottom there in the, the small gray type. Um, they have added their own caption, giving more information about the image. Uh, and the name of the photographer. Um, if you were to search for Agnes Sinclair, despite it being included in the caption and title of that photo, the uploaded photo does not appear in the search results. Um, you can see that if you look at the stories tab there on that screen, it's uh, grayed out because there are no search results under stories for that search. However, if I search for Sinclair family, and then filter by stories, um, you'll see the story come up. And because this particular image has been chosen by the user to be the cover image of their stories, of their story, you will actually see that there. That's just a sort of a bit of a quirk there. Um, that's another thing that you can do with your, with your stories is identify what image will be shown on a search result. Um, so to do that, you would click the three dots uh, um, menu again, uh, and then you can see the option, use this cover image for this story. And then that will be the 
one the one image from your story that will appear in search results if you've made your story public. Right, let's take a look at a few example stories just to give you a flavor of what, what people have been doing with feature. Um, start with a few examples from the Auckland Library's Heritage Collections. Uh, this story was created um, for New Zealand Music Month and includes a selection of music related images from the library's collections. Um, this is a story about colonial era deforestation. Uh, and drainage and development that have affected people living and working on the Hauraki Plains today. Uh, this is a story, this story is a collection of photos of suburban central Auckland in 1989. Uh, we've got a story about the life cycle of uh, monarch butterflies. Um, this user, Zokoro, actually um, is uh, one of our standout story creators. Um, she uh, she makes a lot of uh, she creates a lot of stories for students and uh, curriculum based uh, stories. Um, we've got uh, here we go stories to support teaching and learning of the new Aotearoa histories curriculum, uh, such as this one about women working during World War Two. Uh, this is one about Dame Fina Cooper. Uh, and this is a screenshot of the story with photos from Auckland War Memorial Museum, video from NZ On Screen, and a booklet titled Why We March from Manatu Tonga, the Ministry of Culture and Heritage. Um, so it's, you know, it's the story tool is, is great for bringing diverse uh, items together and uh, creating, you know, narrative and educational resources. Uh, this story is very timely about the history of women's soccer in New Zealand. Uh, and the author uh, added, uh, added to the story just last week. New paragraph. Uh, this is a family history focused story. Um, uh, the O'Callaghan family, apparently. Um, and you can see in this family history story, the author has uploaded family photos and added information to the caption. So sort of what I was suggesting before is a, is a potential use of the upload feature. Uh, this family history is a good use of ephemera, uh, ephemera collections to provide context. In this case, a series of immigration posters and newspaper advertisements of the type that his ancestors may have seen in Scotland. Uh, this story also shows how text links can be used to provide further information or a reference. So if you click on the text link uh, to the 1902 book, uh, Wanganui's Old Settlers, you can see the digitized version of that book in the uh, Victoria University Wellington, of Wellington collection. And here on the second line, you can see the reference to his ancestor on page 22 there. And to end, some selfies. <laughs> and I believe uh, that is, uh, yes, that's the end of Kelly's slides. Uh, kia ora and thank you very much.